Hi, I'm Dr. Mike Millian. I'm here with Tony Swallow. We're here at the Aesthetics meeting in Tampa, Florida. It's uh, been a fantastic meeting. And Tony was one of the keynote speakers. Tony, thanks so much for being with us. Absolutely, thank you. And you're from Lafayette, Louisiana. Correct. So hopefully everyone can understand him. Okay. I'll do my best, <laughs> yes. But I've heard you speak on uh, veneers and cosmetics in Peoria, Illinois. Right. And then today you spoke on sleep apnea. Two right. pretty different subjects. Opposite ends of the spectrum, absolutely. Well, let's start today with what you talked about today. Uh, okay. This video will talk about sleep apnea. Sure. I don't know much about it except what you talked about in there. A lot okay. of dentists would probably like an introduction to this. Okay. So tell me a little bit about sleep apnea, how you got started with this in your practice, how you promote it to, to, to get people to come in, and then what right. you do once they come in, Tony? Okay. Well, essentially, sleep apnea is when basically you're just not getting air into your body. Whenever you go to sleep, then the most common part of this is as we lay back, our jaw falls backwards and our tongue literally falls into our throat. It's okay. as simple as that. Yeah. Now, and, and, you know, I've got to, my mother wears this CPAP, right. and I've got a brother-in-law who wears a CPAP. So right. But so this is of interest. There's a lot of people out sure. there. So come on. It, it's extremely. It's it's an extremely common ailment that people have. Now it starts off okay. as snoring, and you start off as an awake snore. You're snoring, but it doesn't bother you. You're awake during the day. It doesn't right. affect you at all. It may affect the person sleeping next to you, but it doesn't yep. bother you. And then as it, your tongue continues to fall backwards and it, the throat gets blocked more and more, you become what we call a sleepy snore. Now you're snoring, but well, now you don't get out of bed as well, and you tend to fall asleep during the day. You may even fall asleep behind the wheel, which is really scary. Okay. And if that progresses, if That's nothing's scary. done, you end up with what's called sleep apnea. Now an apnea event is where you stop breathing for 10 seconds or more. At night? At night. Okay. So in other words, now your throat is completely blocked off. So you're not just getting a little bit of air kind of vibrating on your throat and the tissue and the palate. Now there's no air for, for 10, 10 seconds. seconds or more. Whoa. If that happens, that's called an apnea event. Okay. Zero to five times per hour, we're okay with that. We'll call that normal. Okay. Five to 15 times per hour, that's a mild apnea. All right. 15 to 30, or some, some people say 20, but 15 to 20 to 30 is moderate. Anything over 30 is severe. Now what okay. we know is anything over 20, the body's starting to wear down you're going to pay a price for this okay. because as you stop breathing, stop getting air in, your brain still requires the same amount of air so your heart starts working overtime to try and get that air to go through. This sounds like we have a, a wonderful opportunity to help people. It sounds like where you're going with it. We this. have a fantastic <laughs> opportunity. Okay, keep, it, and, keep, keep giving me the sure. notes of it now. And, and, it's okay. and it, this is a wonderful way of helping your patients. Now a CPAP, uh -huh. what you were talking about, or a BiPAP, is basically an air pump. There's, it's okay. not complicated. It's a pump. Okay. And so you wear a mask on your face and this machine pumps air in. It pumps it so hard it actually blasts its way it into your it. gums. Okay. It, it goes right into your lungs and it just fills them up so you get air. Absolutely. The problem is these things are very uncomfortable. You've got a, basically yeah. a scuba diving mask on your yeah. face. And if you roll over the mask comes off and you get to go to the bathroom you gotta disconnect yourself, put it all back on, it, yes, it works, but it's a very cumbersome appliance. It'd be nice if there was an easier way. Exactly. So what a lot of patients are coming to me for is they want to get off their CPAP. They don't want to wear this. They like the way it makes them feel, yeah, sure. but they're not comfortable with the way they have to sleep. Yeah. So they come to see me, see, is there another way? Well, there is. We have an appliance, and there are several on the market that have been around for a long time. Okay. There's the TAP, the Oasis, the TAP 1, 2, and 3. There's a SWAT. I mean, there's a lot of them. The okay. one that I like the best is the Somnodent. It's just my personal Somno favorite. Somnodent. Somnodent. S-O-M-N-O-D-E-N-T. -E okay. Correct. Okay. The company is Somnomed that makes the Somno Dent appliance. Okay. Now, essentially, so website's probably somnomed.com or somnodent.com. Okay. They they both yeah. go to it. Okay. The appliance is very simple. All it does is just keep the jaw forward. So we take a bite record where you're in 70% protrusion, about where you would bite through a sandwich. So it's a very comfortable right. position yeah. where we yeah. want to make sure we don't hurt the jaw joint or yeah. anything. Okay. We just take that jaw forward. And the appliance is designed so it keeps you in that position. Now you can still open and close, okay. and I can titrate it. I can bring you further or bring you back. Okay. And this is what you sleep with at night. And basically it's just keeping your tongue out of your throat. Okay. That lets the air to come in. Okay. And 
if you have an apnea score of usually 50 below, sometimes 45 and below, this appliance all by itself gives you enough airway to where you do not need the CPAP machine. Wow, okay. So for the vast majority of patients, this works. Are there some patients so, who so can't? So the majority of these people are in that range that, that... That they're in that range and it'll work for them. It'll work beautifully. Okay. Now the only way to know what your true apnea score is, because you have to know, will this appliance work or not? The way to know for sure is you need to get a sleep study. So okay. we send our patients to a center. There are a lot of them, but every town has well, them. Sure, every town, has, every town them. has them. Yeah. You have a sleep and study. And it's getting more and more common. It's more and yeah. more common. Insurance yeah. pays for it. It's easy to get a study, and okay. a dentist can order them. Uh -huh. The patient goes sleep for a night. They wire them up. They monitor them while they're sleeping, and they'll have a report ready for you the next day. And it's okay. going to tell you. What is your apnea score? Do you snore? Does it cause a problem? Where do you sleep? Better on your left, your right, your stomach, your back? I mean, it just tells you a okay. whole host of things. Okay. And now, you, how, what's the learning curve on learning to read this? It's just not hard. There are okay. some great courses available. Dr. Kent Smith, okay. who's in Dallas, teaches a phenomenal course. There's Barry Glassman up in Allentown, Pennsylvania, another great course. Is this a two-day course? This is a two-day course, and that's all it takes to know how to read a sleep and, study. And you're you're ready to roll with this. You're okay. ready to roll. It's okay. just not complicated. Okay. It really isn't. Now, a dentist cannot diagnose sleep apnea. A sleep physician has to sign off on it. All sleep centers have a physician. That physician's going to work with you. Okay. So you're not doing this alone. You're going to have a doctor working with you, a medical doctor who specializes in sleep, and together you monitor this patient and you just help get air into them. You start getting great. them that great night's sleep again. Great. Patients absolutely adore this service. They don't know about it. That's a problem, but how great it makes them feel is just fantastic. Sounds like a super service. Now, yes. so we've got um, the need is there and it's yes. increasing. Right. Um, dentists can help in a significant way. Correct. Uh, we can learn how to do this. Uh, Correct. With a two day course. Easily. Uh, yes. And then how do we get the word out? Marketing it right. Marketing it is is a unique form that you have to go through. Um, I spent ten years trying to market snoring. If you want to correct your snoring, come see me. Yeah. The problem is most people are that awake snore. They're not a sleepy snore. It doesn't bother them. Yeah. So why would I go buy this appliance? Why would right. I put a mouthpiece? If I'm fine, my wife's having trouble with it, but I'm good. <laughs> okay. So the easiest way is the CPAP machines have been out since the 80s. There are literally thousands and thousands of patients in every community that have a CPAP that just don't like it. They love the way it makes them feel, but they hate having to wear it. Right. So the easiest way is to just market. If you do not like your CPAP, we have something for you. It's okay. a simple way of marketing. It's put in a newspaper, put in any ads that you like. It doesn't have to be a very expensive ad. It doesn't have to be very dramatic. Yeah. You just have to ask the question, do you wear a CPAP and do you like it? Right. And then just start asking every patient that you have. You know, the nice thing about treating oh, this is... But, sure. Absolutely. To your, to your patient. Absolutely. You get something in your have your hygienist, yes. Yeah. Have your hygienist start asking every patient, do you wear a CPAP and do you like it? Uh -huh. And it'll. Or do you know someone who does? Or do you know someone who does? Yeah, yeah. And you just let them know we have an appliance that may be perfect for them. Okay. Now, for the dental office, it's a fantastic service because it's simply taking two impressions, one at the top, one on the bottom. You have to take a bite, and you have to 70% protrusion. There are little gauges designed to help you get the bite correct. Okay. That part the dentist may want to do, but the impressions, any assistant or hygienist can take them. Right. Delivering it is just simply placing it in the mouth. It's easier than delivering a partial. There's no class for anything to adjust. You Great. just basically put it in, yeah. and that's all there is to it. Now, you can adjust it. You let the patient go a few weeks. They come in, see how they're doing. If they're still snoring, you adjust a little bit. It's easy to do. You just turn a little key, brings their jaw a little bit forward, go another few weeks, see how they're doing. Once they say they're doing fine, you got it. You go about three months into it, mm -hmm. have another study. Okay. You have them go get another study. Insurance pays for all of that. Okay. Have another study. Let's see what you're doing. If the study says they're below five in their apnea score, you're done. You got it. If right. they still have a little bit of apnea, just adjust it and bring that tongue out a little further, give them a little more airway in their throat, okay. and that's all there is to it. Now, um, you talked about front door, back door. Right. And, and what we're doing is, open, if, if you're going to move uh, air through a building, right. you need two doors open, the front right. door and the back door. Correct. To get the air through. Right. And we're dealing with the front door. Right. And then the, the tissue uh, uh, 
uh, architecture in the back of the right. throat would be the back door. Uh, correct. And we were able to uh, handle a lot of these people in the front door, but some of them will eventually need some surgery or some correction in that back door to get that open yes. as well. Yes, because what we know is the tissue's going to collapse. That's going to have it's, it's muscle tone. It's a muscle. Right. Right. And as we know, if you don't exercise or work out, you kind of get flabby. It happens. <laughs> so true. we're finding that Right. Out. So what will happen is if you don't treat apnea, it will get worse. Okay. So if you get the appliance in early and you get them down below five, the muscles stay tone, or at okay. least for many, many, many years. Yeah. Okay, well, remember I said if it's 50 and below, this appliance works beautifully. Yeah. Well, what about the ones that are 50 to 100? My feeling is anything over 100, that's, that means 100 times. And that's, that's times, a sleep study, right? It's number one sleep study. That's 100 sleep. times per hour you stop breathing for 10 seconds or more. Wow. So usually if you're over 100, some patients will be. Something's wrong. You're going to need to be on a CPAP and probably still need surgery. Okay. Below 50, this appliance is all you need. Okay. What about the ones 50 to 100? It's kind of half and half. Yeah. Uh, you try it. You start out with you the, start you start out with the appliance. The right. Appliance, and then, it, then you can always progress to the surgery if necessary. Okay. Let, let's be honest, that surgery is not fun, and it is a surgery. And yeah. the, the way the surgery works is you play the scar tissue. The ENT will go in and remove tissue, and when it heals, it's going to create scar tissue, which shrinks up. Okay. And when it shrinks up, it lifts the tissue out of the way. Okay. For a week, yeah, you're on pain relievers and, you know, eating ice cream. Yeah. Yeah. It's not fun. Yeah. So why start with that? Right. You just start with the appliance, see what you get. If we can't get you below five, well, okay, now we can talk about, now let's look at your back door. Right. Maybe we need to open it up a little bit. Let's just get a little bit of surgery done. Okay, for a week you're not doing well. But for most of these patients, they hate that CPAP so much. Yeah. They're like, well, look, for a week I can tolerate that. Yeah. So now, so for some, and I'd say it's probably only 30% of my patients, we do look at, you know, look at some surgery as an option as well. Okay, well, fantastic. Uh, so let's see, for more information, they need to Google Kent Smith. Or Google I, Dr. I, I, Kent Smith, they can certainly Google uh, TonySwallow.com. Spell your name, Tony. S-O-I-L-E-A-U. Okay. okay. You have a website? I have a website, uh, TonySwallow.com okay. and SmilesBySwallow.com. Okay. Either one will find me. Okay. Great. Or if you put in sleep apnea in Louisiana, it's going to find me. Sleep apnea in Louisiana? In Louisiana. Okay. So we have several websites. So if you put my name in, you'll uh, find now me. Now why isn't that Louisiana? Louisiana, well, it's, Louisiana, well that, that's a little closer to New Orleans, <laughs> and Lafayette is a little more Louisiana. <laughs> okay. okay, so either way they can find me, and I'll be happy to Great. put them on the right road. Tony, thank you so much. You're welcome. Absolutely, it was fun.